from the sky situated within the transcendental body of the manifesting Mahavishnu, sense energy, mental force and bodily strength are all generated as well as the sum total of the fountainhead of the total living force. There is no purport, we'll read text number 16. As the followers of a king follow their Lord, similarly, when the total energy is in motion, all other living entities move, and when the total energy stops endeavoring, all other living entities stop sensual activity. The individual living entities are completely dependent on the total energy of the Supreme Purush. No one has independent existence, just as no electric lamp has independent effulgence. Each and every electrical instrument depends fully on the total powerhouse. The total powerhouse depends on the reservoir of water for generating electricity. Water depends on the clouds. The clouds depend on the sun. The sun depends on creation. And the creation depends on the movement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus the Supreme Personality of Godhead
Vahiri Sukadeva Goswami described to Maharaj Pariksit about the process of creation. He is explaining to us how this cosmic manifestation appears. So we have to understand how the potency of the Lord is behind this whole cosmic manifestation. Of course, people in the world today are often atheistic and they think that there is no cause behind the world. They, they will simply worship, what they'll simply see the world itself as being a combination of elements which came just about, just came by chance. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes two natures. There is the Suri, Sura Sampad and Asuri Sampad, the divine nature and the demoniac nature. So the demonic nature is to think that there is no God behind this world, that it's just a creation of chance. The, the, the world, they think the world is unreal. But at the same time, they're very expert to enjoy the world. And they try their best to satisfy their material senses. So the Lord is, well, Sukadeva Goswami is explaining here how the, the whole creation comes about under the will of the Supreme Lord. There's the original potency of the Supreme Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Maya Dyakshena Prakriti Suyate Sacharacharam Hetunane Nakuntia Jagat Viparivantate. Lord Krishna is saying, This material nature moves under my direction, O son of Kunti. And it is producing all moving and non-moving beings. So everything is under the control of the Supreme Lord. It is not independent. <coughs> Just like the shadow moves under the control of the object. If the object is not moving, the shadow will not move. So the material nature moves like that, a shadow under the control of the Supreme Lord. Lord Brahma describes in the Brahma Samhita, Shristi Siddhi Pralaya Sadhana Tattireka Chayai Vayashya Bhuvanani Vibharti Durga Echan Rupama Piyashya Chatesta Desa Govinda Mani Pursham Tamaham Vajami Lord Brahma has described how the material nature moves under the direction of the Supreme Lord. The material nature personified by Mother Durga. So Lord Brahma says the creating, maintaining and annihilating deity of the mundane world 
is worshipped by people in the form of Durga. But this Durga moves like a shadow under the control of the Supreme Lord Govinda. So the material nature is not independent. It's under the control of the Supreme Law. But if we don't care to surrender to the Lord, then we simply try to deny that there's such a person. So Krishna consciousness is to bring us to the position of taking shelter of the Supreme Lord. Just like Mother Durga, she is under the control of the Supreme Lord. And this was realized by Srila Vyasadeva. When Srila Vyasadeva, after taking instruction from, from Narada Muni, sat down in meditation, then he saw the Supreme Lord and the material energy. The, and the, the material energy was under the full control of the Supreme Lord. So this is the relationship between the Lord and the material world. We have to submit ourselves to the Supreme Lord and engage in His service. The material nature is the separated energy of the Lord. Lord Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita. Bumer apo nalo vayu kamano buddha evacha ahankara iti yamne bina prakriti ashtada. Bina prakriti ashtada. That this material nature has eight features and it is separated from the Lord. Right? There is the earth, water, fire, air, ether, and there is the mind, the intelligence, and the false people. So this is the separated energy of the Lord. Just like a woman may have a husband, but she may be separated. So the relationship is not very intimate or sweet. In the same way, the Lord has the material energy. It's the prakriti, the energy of the Lord. But it's separated from Him. He's not so much inclined by it. But at the same time, he will make use of the material energy to create this whole material world for the enjoyment of the conditioned souls. And the material world is created so our illusion of being the supreme enjoyer. We are thinking we we are the enjoyer. We are thinking this world for our pleasure. So 
the Lord create this world so that we can live out our karma. We can just simply live through our karmic reactions. But he also arranges that this world can be the place where we can reform, where we can give up our uh, rebellious nature and where we can submit to the Lord. And so there are two reasons. One is to let people try to enjoy the material world and the other reason is to let people get out from this material world. And so we have to understand how the Lord is the cause of everything. As Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport here, everything comes from the Supreme Lord. Prabhupada gives an example about the electricity comes from the powerhouse. And if Prabhupada is talking about how the water is being used to produce electricity. Sometimes they will use tidal power, the waves coming from the sea. There's a lot of energy there that can also be used to generate electricity. Of course, nowadays they have also atomic energy. They split the atoms to get power. And you have coal, coal fired power stations sometimes. And other times it will be oil which is used to generate electricity. So there are many different ways in which electricity is generated. But it all depends on natural resources which are provided by the grace of the Lord. Prabhupada talks about the water, that the water is coming from the clouds. And the clouds are the creation of the Supreme Lord. And so ultimately the Lord is the cause of everything. Whether we use oil or coal or water or heat to generate electricity, it's all coming by the grace of the Lord. Right, now they, like a country like Malaysia, they don't have winter, they have every day a lot of sunshine, so they can use solar energy, they, they, they have solar panels to collect the rays from the sun and they use that to generate electricity. So it's by the grace of the Lord that the sun is shining every day. And that we, we simply enjoy the resources which are provided by the Supreme Lord. <coughs> so this is described in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Aparayamitastranyam prakriti vidime param jiva bhuta mahabaho yeyidam dayate jagat. Lord Krishna describes that there's another energy of His which are all living entities. So there are two kinds of 
energy to prakriti. There is the para prakriti and apara prakriti. One prakriti has consciousness and one prakriti has no consciousness. So we're the living entities, we're the superior prakriti because we have consciousness. But we have a problem. The problem is we are thinking the resources, the material nature, the inferior prakriti is simply there for our own enjoyment. And because we are thinking like that, that's why we get so many troubles in the material world. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mami Vamsa Jiva Loke, Jiva Buddha Sanatana, Manashastani Indriyani, Prakriti Stani Kashiti. We are all eternally parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. But due to conditioned life, we are struggling very hard with the senses and the mind. Prakriti stani karshiti. Karshiti means Trouble. We're getting a lot of trouble. Why are we getting trouble? Because we're trying to exploit the resources of the material nature. We take the oil from the land, we drill out oil from the land and from the sea, and they will use that oil for our own sense gratification. We will use whatever is given, to, whatever we find on this planet, we think it's all for our own enjoyment. But if we, when we think like that, we can never be peaceful. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the proper consciousness in order to be peaceful. He says, Bhaktaram Yagna Tapasham Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Suridam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatvam Om Shanti Mrichati. That we have to understand the Lord is the proprietor. The word is Maheshwa, the one who is proprietor of everything. And all the austerities and penances which we do, all the sacrifices are meant to be done for His pleasure. And we should understand that He is our best friend. So when we think like, like that, then we can be actually peaceful. But when we are thinking, this is mine, this belongs to me, I want to get more, I need more, then we will never be peaceful. So we have to control the mind in the sense. We have to come to understand our actual position. That we are not the Ishwara, but we are the Prakriti. We are under the control of the Supreme. And we are meant to engage in His service. 
And when we work in cooperation with the Lord, with the plan of the Lord, then we will be happy. But if we are listening only to our mind and the demands of our senses, then we will never be happy. All right, any questions, comments? Yes? Yes, sir. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, you were saying devotional service should be pleasing to Krishna. How, uh, how do I understand? Um, you were saying devotional service should be pleasing, pleasing to Krishna. So how do I understand sometimes the uh, activities of the demons also please Krishna? Uh, are their activities also pleasing to Krishna? How do I understand? No, of course the demons will not be pleased with uh, Krishna will not be pleased with the activities of the demons. Krishna <laughs> You have to understand this material world is a prison house and there's a lot of rebellious souls here in this world. They're simply planning for their own sense gratification. And so all of their endeavors, all of the activities which they do, and they just simply create a hellish situation in the world. They're engaged in acts what, which are called Ugra Karma. Ugra Karma means activities which will destroy the world. They do things like create nuclear weapons to kill people. The modern science is all about how to kill people better, kill more people and conquer more people. They don't develop things to save lives, but they develop things to end life. And they kill one species after another. Sometimes they're killing the whale, the fish in the sea, they're killing the whale, sometimes they're killing the people. The whole, the whole demonic civilization is just simply with that mentality that whoever is my enemy, I will have him killed. And the, the, the demonic nature is described in Bhagavad Gita in the Ishwaraham, a humble I am the controller and I am the enjoyer. Siddhoham, I am perfect. Balavam, I am strong. Suki, I am happy. This is the, the Asuric mentality. We think like this. Asatyam apratishtam te jagada ahur anishwaram. They are thinking there is no God in control. And this world is unreal. So just enjoy. <laughs> just, but of course, if it's unreal, how can you enjoy something which is not real? 
But this is the demonic nature. They think like that. They do not know what is cleanliness and what in, what morality is. They have no standards. But they simply want to satisfy the senses. So certainly these people are not pleasing to Lord Krishna. And that's why Krishna brings them to this world. Well, actually they bring themselves by their own demonic nature. They bring themselves into this world. And they will enter into lower species of life. And they will take birth repeatedly in demonic species of life. Repeatedly, they will take birth in bodies like snakes and crocodiles and nasty, ferocious beasts which live completely in the mode of ignorance. So, people, the people who have this mentality, they get the results of that mentality. The result is they enter into demonic species of life, birth after birth. The material world is for them, it's created for them. But I said the material world is also created to help people get out of this material place and go back to God. That we can reform ourselves, we can change our nature. Those who are demoniac can become saintly. Those who are Nitya Bhaja, eternally conditioned souls, can become Nitya Siddha, they can become liberated souls. They have to get the association of devotees, they have to hear about transcendental knowledge. Then they can be changed. But then Maharaj Koshman said, um, I was reading the book of Gaur Govinda Swami, and Maharaj was saying in his book, sometimes like when Krishna wants to fight, he will create an opponent to fight with. Is it also some sort of like devotional service to Krishna? If somebody fights Krishna? Well, in some cases, there are some cases like Jai and Vijay who were the gatekeepers in Vaikuntha. So they came to the material world and they took birth three times as demons just to fight with Krishna. That was for the pleasure of the Lord. So the Lord, he likes to fight, he likes some, and, but nobody in the spiritual world will fight with the Lord because they're all his pure devotees. So the Lord arranges sometimes to send his pure devotees into the material world to take part of his demons and in that way they are able to find him. And the Lord relishes this, this opportunity to find. 
主位他也有呃战斗精神，但是在灵魂世界都是他的，都是奉献者，没有人跟他战斗，所以他的安排，他的纯粹奉献者来到物质世界，来嗯以这种战斗的精神呢跟他对对打。So there are special cases, very rare, where great devotees will come here and fight with the Lord. 所以有特殊的情况之下。But it's not that all the demons who fight with Krishna are his devotees. But certainly those demons who are killed by Krishna, they're very fortunate. They get special mercy. Krishna may take them to the spiritual world. He will liberate them. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them come to the spiritual world. Krishna will let them Agathura also he got to go to the spiritual world. Pontraka, he was another demon. He wanted he, he had extra arms put on his body. He wanted to show that he was actually Vishnu. So Lord Krishna killed him, but he liberated him to the spiritual world, gave him a spiritual body. But usually the demons killed by Krishna, they will enter to the Brahma Jyoti. They go into the impersonal Brahma. They don't go back to God then. So that's the that's the result of their demonic nature. And they get impersonal liberation. Mm. Yes, Yashuti, we have a question. Everything depends on association. If you're able to give your child nice association, to devotee association, then they can grow up to be Krishna conscious. Sometimes, so parents they want their child to be devotees, but the parents themselves are not devotees. So the example has to come from the parents. Sometimes, parents want their child to be devotees, but the parents themselves are not devotees. 
就不是封建的，所以他们自己本身要树立榜样。The mother and father, they may like that their son, but their child would be a devotee. But if they don't chant Hare Krishna, they don't worship Krishna, you can't expect the child will be so easy made into a devotee. It doesn't happen. And sometimes also the parents, they come very late to Krishna consciousness and they want to change everything and that time, by that time the child is already conditioned to material life and you they try to change the child, the child doesn't want to change. <laughs> There was one family, the mother and father, they became devotees, but their son didn't want to be a vegetarian, didn't want to stop eating meat. And they already accustomed to eating meat, he didn't want to change. It's not an easy thing to bring a child up to be a devotee of Krishna. Many people have told me the difficulties they have trying to make their child bring their children up to be devotees. <coughs> But we try our best, do what you can. Any other question? Okay. Srimad Bhagavad Gita.